Hey, good morning, good afternoon. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. It is Wednesday, May 5th, and we have a few things to talk about with this Arctic blast. Gosh, shall we even have an, another chance for an even bigger one coming, if you believe it or not, in the end of the month. Now, the storms are still going to the northeast and the southeast, and it's caused some major damage, guys. We had over 300,000 power outages homes last night, and if you just put two people per home, which we know there's probably double that that's over 600,000 people without power so it was a big so it was a big hit to the people with their power yesterday and, and god bless you all i hope you all get your power back and everything will be okay and it has gotten better since last night but it's still a very bad outcome still uh, the highest total so far is alabama 73,000 mississippi 67,000 virginia 22,000 Arkansas 21,000 and Georgia 19,000. Now that's only the biggest. Now we had over 20 tornadoes just yesterday alone and we had almost 20 if not a little over 20 the day before that. So I'll leave this link in the description so you can check out all the tornadoes with the damage where it was and you can actually zoom right into your yard and see what's going on. And you will be able to zoom all the way in and see exactly what's going on where these tornadoes was and who was involved. So it's a good page to look at. And this part I'm sure is pretty much self-explanatory and expected. We had over 453 wind damage reports from this system as it's moved. So the main threat was the wind. There was an injury yesterday. The wind did cause a tent to collapse in Columbia and one person was injured and taken to the hospital. So God bless you, whoever you are. I hope you'll be okay. Now the two videos I have for you, the one on the very top is showing you the 500 millibar height way up in the air, showing this cold air anomaly coming in. And you see it looks like it's getting southern as it swings through. The one right above my head is 850 millibars. It's a little bit lower and closer to us. You can see it don't quite stretch that far south, but you can see the movement of it. I'm going to go through your temperatures. And if you've never been here before, hello, <laughs> good morning to you. My name is Mark. I do usually upload every single day. It's just yesterday my kids had their final testing going on and they needed all of my attention, so I didn't upload yesterday. But school's almost over. Testing's done, yay. <laughs> so it will be back to normal every day. Just not Fridays from sundown to Saturdays at sundown. That's when I take my Sabbath. But this is your AO. This is your Arctic Oscillation. Just let you know the next time we have a potential chance for the polar cold air to come into our country and how long it's going to stay and how deep it's going to go. Now the Euro shows us that around the 7th of May, in just a couple of days, there's going to be a bounce that's going to come in our country, go to the northern very high, and then come back in a little bit and then leave. And it's going to last sometime from the 7th to the 11th. And when we check out other anomalies, we do see the GEFS. It also agrees that from the 7th, to the 11th, there will be a dip of Arctic air coming into our country with a slight chance maybe later on around the 19th, 20th. It's still too far to see. Now the GFS, which is usually pretty spot on with Arctic Oscillation for some reason, is very good at it. And it is picking up also from the 7th to 11th. There will be a dip from the 7th to 11th. And then it will go to back to a neutral phase. But it's also showing that we have another chance from the 17th to the 20th for another Arctic drop. And it's actually showing it going a little deeper into our country. So it could be a cold air anomaly. It could be a southwest problem. We don't know yet. It's still too far. And when we look at the long range model from the Euro, it is somewhat agreeing that somewhere around the end of May that there will be a, a dip in our Arctic Oscillation that is possible. And it will stay around until the first week of June. Now this is a good look from the 500 millibar height so we can see as it comes in and affects our country. It's going to start having some cold air coming in and it's going to reach pretty far south. That's going to be reached pretty far south to upstate South Carolina, possible by the 7th. But it will twirl around for a few days and then it will affect the northeast by the time you get to the 9th, the 10th, and then the 11th. And that's how far it shows us all the way from the 7th to the 11th. So as we wake up on the morning of the 7th, it does show that we do have a chance for being a 30s for the Midwest and a little bit for the Northeast for the intercoastal states. But everybody else pretty much is going to be in the 40s. The lowest you're going to be in the South is also in the high 40s. So I'm not showing freezing conditions in the South where you got to worry about your plants or anything like that. And with the wind chill on Friday, which is the 7th, it's not showing too much more difference. It does get colder in the Midwest. You could feel like you're in the 20s, and actually your actual temperatures will be in the 30s to high 30s. 
So you won't be in the 20s, but you will feel like that with the wind chill. Then Saturday, as we move over, is going to move it over into the Michigan and intercoastal states for the northeast. And a little bit of Ohio Valley is going to feel like you're in the upper 30s. While Wisconsin, Michigan, and a little bit of the intercoastal northeast could have freezing conditions. Everybody else is just going to be in the 40s. But once again, with the wind chill coming in with this Arctic air, you could feel like y'all are in the 20s where you have freezing conditions. Even Michigan, you could be in a, feel like you're in the low 20s with this wind chill. Then Sunday, it's going to be leaning towards the northeast more than anywhere. So pretty much northern Wisconsin, Michigan, and the intercoastal states of the northeast will be somewhat on freezing conditions. Matter of fact, Pennsylvania could be in the high 20s by Sunday. But as you can see, it don't reach too far into our country. It's just a slight of the Midwest and the edge of the Northeast. And with the wind chills, you could feel like you're in the 20s again uh, for the Northeast in Michigan. You're just going to be cold the whole time. Then on Monday, it's going to stay up in the Midwest again. It's mostly going to be in this region this whole time. It's not going to dip too far at all into our country. Then one on the 21st, if that does happen, it shows an even further dip. So that one I will check take a look at and i will update you on but by monday you'll be in your 40s uh, you'll still be in freezing conditions for michigan and wisconsin it's pretty much going to be this general area the whole time and even though you're going to be in the 40s for monday the ohio valley is going to feel like you're in the 30s with this wind chill while still michigan's going to feel like you're in the 20s wisconsin's going to feel like you're in the 20s this wind chill is really going to be the main factor in making everybody feel really cold when you're either in the upper 30s or even the low 40s. And then the last little dip on the 11th does show that it will go a little bit into the Ohio Valley before it pulls out. So you could be in the upper 30s for Tuesday for the Ohio Valley. But once again, those wind chills is really what's going to make it a little worse. You're going to feel like you're in the 20s still for the Midwest the Ohio Valley, and the Northeast. The wind chill is going to be the worst part of this Arctic blast. Then Wednesday on the 12th, as it leaves, the last little tail will hit the Northeast a little bit. You could be in freezing conditions again, maybe even the high 20s for Pennsylvania and New York as it leaves. And the wind chills will again be feeling like you're in the 20s with this cold air. So you will have 20 degree temperatures feels like for wind chills as it moves through a lot of people will not be in freezing conditions when this happened but the midwest and intercoastal states of the northeast and maybe the upper ohio valley will be in freezing conditions now before you go there's something i want to speak with you about i do believe it's very important to keep god in our life every day and we should thank him every morning just for waking up to another day whether it's waking up with problems just waking up in general is a blessing guys so god bless you all going through these problems right now I do pray you do get your power back as soon as possible. Ephesians 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, 